Now, uh, let us continue with our discussions about uh, abstract machines. And uh, so we have uh, defined the general concepts of the abstract machine and the interpreter. And now let's talk about the implementation of a language. So remember uh, that ML is, by def definition, a device which allows the execution of programs written in L. So we have uh, uh, a language L, and ML is uh, the abstract machine uh, for L. So again, if we think about the, uh, uh, the examples that we talked about, uh, we said that the uh, Java virtual machine is an abstract machine uh, because it is a device which allows the execution of programs written in Java bytecode. So in that case, L is Java bytecode and ML is M Java bytecode or the Java virtual machine. In other words, the other example that we mentioned was the hardware machine. In that case, the uh, the language was the uh, machine language of the hardware machine, and the hardware hardware machine is uh, then a device which allows the execution of programs written in this machine language. So, given this, uh, an abstract machine, therefore, corresponds uniquely to a language, its machine language. Now, conversely, given a programming language L, there are many abstract machines that have L as their machine language. Uh, they differ from each other in the way in which the interpreter is implemented and in the data structures that they use. So here we're basically saying that uh, for a given programming language, we, there is not a single abstract machine for it. There is, of course, this possibility of implementing many abstract machines for a single given language. And they might differ from each other, for example, in the way that the, uh, the, the interpreter is implemented. They ha however, they all agree on the language that they inter interpret, meaning L. Uh, so, to implement a programming language, L, means then implementing an abstract machine which has L as its ma machine language. So, to implement a programming language means that we have to implement an abstract machine uh, which allows then the execution of programs written in the language L. So, what options do we have when we want to implement an abstract machine? Well, we could implement it in hardware, directly in hardware. We could simulate it using software. Or we could simulate it or emulate it using firmware. So let's look at these different options. Now, uh, the first one, implementation of uh, the abstract machine ML in hardware. Uh, in that case, it would uh, be sufficient to implement in the hardware the data structures and algorithms uh, that uh, ML comprises. Um, This, the advantage here is that if we do this, the execution of programs in, in our program languages will be very fast because uh, they have been, the, the uh, data structures and algorithms have, have been uh, implemented in hardware. Now, the disadvantage is that it's of course very complicated to do this. The, the constructs of a high-level language, L, uh, are relatively complicated. And they are very far from the elementary functions at the hardware level. So trying to implement in the hard in hardware the data structures and algorithms of a uh, uh, abstract machine 
is uh, is a difficult job and notice also that once we have implemented it in hardware it would be almost impossible to modify if we modify our abstract machine basically we might have to start over again and implement uh, the uh, the constructs in hardware at least the modifications to this program language would be very costly so in practice what it means then that when you implement uh, an abstract machine ml in hardware only low level languages are used because their constructs are, are quite close to the operations of physical devices. So only low-level languages are, are uh, implemented in hardware or abstract machines for low-level languages. Now the second option here is simulation of uh, abstract machine using software. So, uh, what, what is generally done here is that we, we implement uh, the data structure and algorithms required by this abstract machine using programs written in another language, L'. prime. So, in that case, we are assuming that uh, L prime, or the uh, the uh, abstract machine for for L prime has already been implemented. So using L prime's machine, let's call it M prime L prime, the machine ML can be implemented using appropriate programs written in L prime. So these programs then interpret the constructs of L by simulating the functionality of ML, where ML is the abstract machine for L. Uh, now let's try to exemplify this. We're saying that we implement the data structures and algorithms required by our abstract machine using programs written in another language, uh, which has already been implemented. So if, for example, we let's say that uh, our language L is Java bytecode, that and that the abstract machine for L, which is ML, is then uh, the Java virtual machine. Uh, because it is a device which allows the execution of programs written in Java bytecode. Now, we use or implement this uh, Java virtual machine using another language. So we're basically simula simulating the Java bytecode using using uh, another language. How can we do that? Well, it basically means that we we need to write an interpreter that interprets the Java bytecode. So we could do that, for example, by writing the interpreter in, in uh, uh, C++. So Develop the interpreter basically means that we are uh, implementing the abstract machine because the interpreter is part of the abstract machine. Uh, so our L prime here could be C++. Now the flexibil there, there is uh, there is some flexibility associated with this because the programs that implement the constructs of our abstract machine can easily be changed. Going back to our example earlier, if we if L prime is C++ and L is Java bytecode, then we can easily 
change our uh, C++ interpreter. And this is uh, uh, can easily uh, be done, uh, but not as, but for in the case of the hardware implementation, that would be tough to do. Now, the, uh, the disadvantages is, on the other hand, the performance, because uh, the performance of this uh, implementation is lower than the hardware implementation. Because basically what we're doing, we're implementing the abstract machine for ML by using another abstract machine, M prime L prime, which must be implemented already. Now the, the third part here is what is called emulation of, of uh, ML using firmware. Uh, so in that case we are simulating the data structure and algorithms of the abstract machine in microcode. So what is microcode? So here in at Wikipedia it says uh, microcode is a layer of hardware level instructions or data structures or involved in the impl implementation of a higher level of higher level machine code instructions in many computers and other processes. It resides in special high speed memory and translates machines instructions into sequences of detailed circuit level operations. It helps separate the machine instructions from the underlying electronics so that instructions can be designed and altered more freely. So uh, it's a layer of hardware level instructions and resides in special high speed memory and the, and the purpose is to translate machine instructions into sequences of detailed circuit level operations. So this is kind of in between the uh, uh, simulation of, of uh, software and uh, this is the simulation in software and simulation in hardware. So the, the uh, uh, abstract machine is simulated using uh, programs and in the case of a firmware em emulation these programs are micro programs uh, which are stored in high-speed memory instead of being programs written in a high-level language. That's, that's the difference. So the microprograms use a special very low-level language which are stored in a, in a special uh, read-only high-speed memory instead of in, in main memory. So the, the, the advantage here is that they can be executed at high speed and there is also some flexibility because modification of microcode is, is uh, 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 no, sorry, there is a flexibility issue here because the modification of microcode is complicated and requires special hardware to rewrite the memory. So it's, uh, uh, it is not as costly as, as if everything would be uh, implemented directly in hardware, but it is still costly because the memory needs to be rewritten. So of these three possible uh, options for implementation of an abstract machine, implementation in hardware, simulation using software or simulation using firmware. The second option, simulation using software, is by far the most common one. Basically, we, which in that case we are implementing an interpreter uh, <coughs> Uh, the interpreter for our abstract machine using uh, software, which then means that we're using another abstract machine that has already been implemented. Now, uh, if we look at the ideal case, regarding implementation. We, the assumption that we have here is that we want to implement 
the language L. And remember that implementing the language L really means that we need to implement an abstract machine for L called ML. And let us just exclude the direct implementation in hardware. Uh, and uh, we also, also exclude the implementation in, in firmware and we, we look at this implementation uh, in, in software. <coughs> uh, so for the implementation of the abstract machine ML, we have available uh, a machine, let's call it MOLO. Uh, and this is the host machine. So the implementation of this language L on the host machine takes place using a translation from L to L0. So we're basically translating the original programming language uh, L here to another language L O. And the two modes of implementations that are possible here is a purely interpreted implementation or purely compiled implementation. <coughs> 